if you don't want to do a full-blown martial art, self-defense is the ideal thing. Everybody needs, at some point in their lives, some kind of self-defense. You never, ever know what's going to happen. Self-defense is something you can carry with you all the time. It's not like if you live in America, you want to carry a gun, you can leave your gun at home. You never leave your self-defense behind because it's all about these and this. So, what we're going to demonstrate today are cut-down versions of bigger techniques. There are many, many ways you can be attacked. We can't cover them all. There are many defenses. There are many defenses from each attack. We're going to cover maybe one or two defenses from various attacks. The techniques today that we're demonstrating to you come from the martial art Aikijutsu. The words Aikijutsu mean harmony spirit way. Harmony being no power to power, making harmony with your opponent. If you're very strong and overpower an opponent, fine. If you're not as strong, physically as strong as your opponent, you're not going to win. This is a martial art that demonstrates you do not need power to power, but to make harmony with an attack. Aikijutsu comes from around the 11th century, depending on, of course, which book you read, because there was no written down history of martial arts, and it was taught from family to family, handed down from father to son, and so on. So until the last sort of hundred years, nothing was really written down, and it's very unclear when things actually started. But we know, or we think, from around the 11th century, devised for samurai fighting. When you fought the samurai in their armour, their weak points were their joints, where the armour had to be bendable, where you could bend. Okay, So there was no armour plating in these areas. So many of our techniques are from the wrist or from the elbow, knee joints, and of course the neck. <laughs> A lot of martial arts or a lot of well a lot of martial arts and self-defense techniques depend on dropping into a certain posture what they call a fighting posture maybe such as this okay the problem with this you're committed to one side or to the other to the right side possibly to the left side what we're going to teach you our posture our fighting posture is simply this it's almost giving up. You're calming the situation down. The best way to stop somebody from fighting you is to talk your way out of it. Walk away. We're not interested. Whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down. If they calm down, it's all over. No fight. You've won. If they don't, and an attack comes towards you from here, you can drop into one of these postures either side or you can move forward into posture either side this is neutral from here you can work any side of the body you need to work many self defenses many forms of self defense will teach punches or various blows it takes a long time to learn to punch correctly. You see people punching through uh, concrete slabs, uh, pieces of wood. I have to put my hand up in, in, in over 30 odd years as, as working as a doorman. Never ever have I been attacked by a piece of wood or a concrete slab. But think about this. We're going to show you two punching techniques. Okay? And I want you to try this. Put your hand out in front of you and make a fist and put the fist on top of your palm then bring it up and as hard as you possibly can bring it down onto your palm okay no problem whatsoever doesn't hurt at all hard as you can try it again okay make stings a little bit but not too bad okay what's the good of that is it going to hurt anybody trust me it hurts. I'll just demonstrate this. Stay perfectly still. Eat! 
Thank you. Okay. If the blow lands in the correct place, it's going to hurt. You don't have to train for months and months and months or condition your knuckles to make this work. You've just done it on the palm of your hand. If you're watching this DVD with someone else, turn around and do it that hard on their nose. If they're stupid enough to let you do it, can you see the point? Another technique we use, the Japanese word for this is teisho. It just means centre hand, but it's actually here, the base of the palm, that we use to strike. Okay? Again, this striking technique is used for an upward blow, normally aimed at the chin. So from standing... Again, again, you wouldn't want that landing on your chin. Extremely painful. Now I'm going to demonstrate some escapes. This is an escape from someone holding the wrist. Very simple, very basic. Takes the wrist. Underneath, you've got four fingers. If I try and move against those four fingers, I'm not going to come out of there. On the top, one thumb. Okay? Now, all I'm going to do is rotate, and you see how the thumb slips away, and move my hand down, and it's out. Okay? Two hands, again, he's now got eight fingers under there. There's no way. If I try and pull my hand up, it's not going to come up like that. But this is the weaker part, two thumbs. But as I said, I can't lift my hand up because it's not going to come out. Okay? But by simply dropping the elbow and bending my knees, it just levers its way out. I'll do that one more time. Bend your knees down, elbow comes down, and it just levers out. Thank you. I'm going to demonstrate a technique to escape from a bear hug or a grab from behind when your arms are on the outside of the attackers. This could be to carry you off, to pull you to the ground. This is very simple and straightforward. Attacker's knuckles come about an inch away from them, up the elbow, up the, towards the elbow or the wrist. Make a fist, knuckles on here. One big hit is no good. Just tiny little taps, but getting harder all the time until the pain builds up and they will release. Then stepping away, as soon as they've released, you are now free of the technique. This is a technique to escape from when somebody's grabbed you from behind, from a bear hug position, when their arms are fairly high up your arms. And all we're going to do is bend our knees, move our left or right leg out to the side, like so, bringing the arm up. Imagine you have a big beach ball in front of you, and you're just making a circle with that hand around the edge of the ball. The knees bend, sliding out, turn the head in, draw the last foot out, and you're away. Now all you've done from this is escaped. You haven't actually done anything else. You haven't done anything about your attacker. All you've done is gotten away from him. We do that again. This time, blowing up my chest as I'm grabbed, as I'm coming out, letting all the air out. And it really is as easy as it looks. It really, really is that simple. This time, to do something about the technique. Now, it's okay getting away, but he's still standing there. This time I'm going to do something about it. And it's exactly the same. Breathing in as you grabbed. Moving the leg and deflating. This time, the left hand just comes straight up, takes the fingers, 
steps out and hand lock. And this is very painful, is it not? <coughs> Extremely painful, very little pressure. This is an attack where somebody's taken both your hands from behind, an unusual attack, but cover every aspect. And it's very simple. Again, using this dropping technique. Don't try and pull your hands up. There's no, there's no power there. So it's a question of, as you bend your knees, drop your elbows down. So I'm moving again to the side and using the beach ball in front of us. This time, moving both hands together as we move down and out. This hand coming around, taking here, drawing through into this submission here. As you can see, up on his toes and completely open to another strike if necessary. With power. This is a technique from somebody taking you around the throat with one hand, gripping your wrist with the other. We're going to use the same technique as we used before, whereby we bend the knees and step out. We use our beach ball principle, but this time the hand that has been gripped is going to take the hand that's around your throat. And it's as simple as this, dropping down, moving out, turning the head into the body, the left hand coming onto the fingers, turning the head out, stepping back and this grip alone creating a twist on the wrist. This is an attack, two hands on your throat from the back, an unusual ex uh, attack but we're going to cover this one anyway and again we're using our old favourite with the fingers. This time we're bending our posture down, stepping out hand coming across onto the fingers, gripping under the palm. Fingers pushed under the palm, thumb on the back of the hand, and again, turning the head, drawing back the foot, and again, into this wrist lock. Some of the techniques you've seen previously have ended in this position with this particular wrist lock. Now the way to finish this is to bring up the other hand, palm to your opponent's palm, and turn out under. The lock is here. This lock controls him. If there's an attempt to punch me from the front, put it on a little more strongly, bring him up, or you can use this to escort someone away if that's necessary. And to finish the technique, which may result in fracturing the wrist, so a lot of caution needs to be taken when practicing. Palm to palm, and just turn it through. This is a technique to demonstrate an attack where the hair is grabbed from the back. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the equipment to do this technique properly, so Steve is just going to lay a hand on top of my head. It's exactly the same as if the hair is being grabbed, because what you're actually doing is putting your hands on top and forcing the hand to stick to your head, so they can't pull your hair. So, Steve. Bringing two hands up, pushing down onto your own head, Stepping out and round, and up, and straight off. From here, stepping through, bringing the left hand onto the elbow, and pushing forward. Again. Two hands onto the top, pressing down onto your own head, Stepping out and round, and lifting, and just sliding out. 
the left hand coming off to the elbow, stepping in and straight down. This is the defence from attack from two hands on the hair. Exactly the same principle. Two hands on top, pressing down so your hair can't be pulled. Again, out, down, and up. And see where we are. Look at the posture. From here, stepping forward through the arms to the side of the head, turning, turning the body. Let's try that again. This is to demonstrate a technique which is very, very simple, quite crude, but very effective. Bringing one hand around the throat, one hand gripping my hair. Bring two hands up, locking in, fingers in, but do not make the mistake of trying to pull this down. Just push your elbows back. If you push your elbows back, this wrist will lock onto your chest and he won't be able to bring it up to strangle you. So do not try and pull it, just bring the elbows back which locks this in. Again, dropping the posture, stepping out, turning under, bringing this elbow around, elbow to elbow and down into this lock. This is a technique from a, for a defence from behind, a strangle from behind. One arm around the throat, one hand locking. Again, fingers in, just bring your head up, tuck your fingers in, head down and bring your elbows down. The whole thing coming down together. Moving out and down, turning. And come up the other side with the wrist lock. Moving around, elbow to elbow, forcing your elbow down. This is a technique to escape from a headlock, a side headlock, or if you remember the old days of Kent Walton and the wrestling, a side head chancery. I have no idea what that word means. So this is from a side, this often comes in with kids bullying each other at school, and it's quite a common sort of kids thing, but as an adult you can get stuck in this and it's very, very simple to escape from. Uh, I'm just going to remove my glasses for this one, because I do need... I do need to be making quite close contact. Now this is not a difficult technique, doesn't include a great deal of physical effort. Now in case you're wondering what happened there, it's simply a pinch at the top of the inner thigh. Okay, this does not involve squeezing, pulling, or pinching genitalia. This is purely the fat at the top of the thigh, squeezed tightly. Lots of nerve endings, lots of pain. Results in jumping back and you just simply move away. If you need to do something with your attacker, rather than just get him off you, then you could try this. As the headlock comes around, just hands into position, again, not pulling away, but pushing them into your own chest. Again, bringing the elbows back, turning the head into their body, and simply stepping back.
This is to demonstrate what happens if somebody tries to abduct you, basically, drag you off, keep you quiet. One arm, one arm coming around the waist, one covering your mouth. Now, the hand we are going to attack is this one. We're not worried about this, we know exactly where it is. Quite often with this attack, it's round and you're off your feet and gone. Okay? So you need to be quick. The arm comes around, as soon as this hand comes over your mouth, again, we're bringing the hands up, tucking the fingers in, and just this time I'm going to cover my mouth so you'll have to watch carefully. This is a technique to demonstrate what happens when somebody grabs the lapels. When somebody grabs the lapels, you're in danger from several areas. A knee to the groin or a headbutt particularly. So we're going to cover all that at the same time as we take care of the hands on the lapels. The one thing you don't need to worry about are the hands because you know exactly where they are and what they're doing. They're holding your lapels. So that's the last of your problems. Okay, or the least of your problems. So, covering the groin area by turning and stepping back, dropping this knee forward. That's all you're doing. These hands are up here as normal in our fighting posture. As you drop back and turn, this arm comes around the palm to drop here, but at the same time, you can be striking out at the face with the elbow. So we're just turning two. His knee attack is taken care of, and the head attack is taken care of. So from here, we're coming. One. This hand hooking under the fingers, the elbow dropping through between the arms. As you do, this is turning the wrist. This leg's coming back and turning round to bend the elbow. As soon as the elbow is bent, pressure down, keeping the hand still. Little pressure needed. One, two. Now to demonstrate, be strong. Not a lot of pressure needed. If you imagine it with a full hand here, holding this in position and pressing down. The wrist snapping at this point. So again, one, two, and pressure. This is a technique to demonstrate when somebody's grabbed the lapels, drop their elbows to pull you in, normally to use the headbutt. Cupping the hands, so you pull the forefinger across, drop the thumb onto there, and simply bringing the hands together over the ears. So to demonstrate with a little more speed, This technique is to cover a strangle from the front with two hands on your throat. This is easily a panic thing. You start to panic, you can't breathe, they're squeezing, then you lose the idea of what to do. It's very simple. The more simple the technique, the more it, it, it'll work, the less there is to go wrong. So, two hands on the throat. throat. Oh. Dropping back and turning the knee as we did before, but this time driving up the right hand above your head as if you're hitting yourself on the head so we turn drive it up and straight back driving up and straight down if you remember the demonstration earlier on the nose how hard you need to hit somebody to damage a nose This technique demonstrates a technique to get away from two hand strangle on the front.
bringing the right arm up over under the other arm bringing the other hand up to praying hands and turn the hips and push this done fast enough and smooth enough will throw an opponent to the ground for real time This is a technique to demonstrate what to do if someone comes and grabs your hair from the front. Again, clamping on, cutting this edge into the wrist, stepping back and forcing it down. Your opponent drops. As you come up, squeeze the fingers and turn the hand this way. One more time. Stepping back, cutting the wrist down, squeeze the fingers, turn it this way, and the pain is coming on here. Squeeze it over. <coughs> this is a technique from somebody attacking to take the hair with two hands at the front of your head. So again, we come up, clamping on, using this edge of the hand to cut down as we step back, taking the grip, turning the hand out, creating a twist on this section of the wrist, moving forward and pushing down. To finish, striking in. You'll notice I'm standing at this angle. If a kick comes up from here and the punch comes too far away. This technique is from a bear hug when your arms are trapped inside. So the, the attacker's arms have come around the outside, you're trapped against your side. First thing I'm doing is breathing in, filling my chest up with air. Okay? Simply bringing the arms around and up. You cannot lift your elbows because he's squeezing in. It's force against force. So bring your elbows up. Take. Turning, stepping back this way, across, so your right leg comes across the back of your left leg, and turning the hips. same technique with the attacker's arms lower so I can't bring my arms up they're now stuck completely by my sides now then if you've ever pulled a nail out of a piece of wood with a pair of pinchers lean this way and simply take it out that's the escape okay Oops. Now with power, and lean, yeah, and the arm will come out. Once it's out, again, the leg crosses the back, and we turn. Ready to strike. Now, the advantage of this, as he's attacking you, you can actually see the attack coming, so you can react immediately. If he attacks from the back, I wait until he's on because I don't know he's coming. Unlike some martial artists you will have seen in films, I cannot see at the back of my head. I can't catch a sword blindfold and I can't bat flip 20 feet into a tree because this is called the real world. When he comes from the front, I can see him coming and I can react more quickly. Out. Turn. Striking. Kick comes up. <laughs> 
Moving on now from static techniques to somebody actually trying to throw a punch at you. What we're going to do to start with is one hand taking a hold of the lapel, the other hand coming in with a punch. This is just to demonstrate the attack first of all. To the chin. So, again hands up as soon as the, the attack has come to the lapel. The hands turn, as the punch comes in, simply turning. And we can do that from the other side to give you a better angle. Hands up. And strike to the side of the head. Taisho, the hand centre. Again, the strike we demonstrated earlier on. So the side of the hand into the side of the head. So we do the whole thing. Strike. This technique is from someone swinging a punch in at you, or as we would say, mawashi, to swing in, roundhouse. To demonstrate, the safest place to be is close into your opponent, your attacker. So as it comes in, if you move forward, then it's, you're well in and away from the power. To actually do something about this attack, we move two hands in, now, it's very important that you remember this is not a block. If he's stronger than me, the block is not going to work. So we're actually moving around with him. We are harmonizing with him. As he comes forward, moving around, taking the chin with the other hand. And when he comes in at speed, This technique is from a straight punch to the face, or as we would say, to the Jodan area. So straight punch straight into the face. So it's very important, the first thing we have to do before we even think about taking care of our opponents is getting out of the way, basically. And it's simple enough to do, as the punch comes in, step and turn. Okay, Stepping out diagonally and turning the hips. So you're at the back of your opponent. Then to do something about it, we're in our posture. As we turn, we just take the wrist. Slowly. Bringing the back foot around. Bringing the other hand up. And dropping the elbow. This technique is defense from a straight punch into the stomach. Very simple. Again, standing in our fighting posture. All we have to remember is to avoid the fist coming towards us. If we miss, mess everything else up, completely miss it, we're still out of the way. So if I don't do anything but move, technique comes in. At least I've moved out of the way of the punch, which is the most important thing. Now to do something about it, as this leg travels in that direction, this hand from our posture is simply going to brush aside the technique. We'll do it very slowly. Now, if I try and stop the power coming towards me directly, power to power, then it's simply my power against his. Okay? Strongest man wins. This time, if you put your hand out this way, make strong posture, strong as you possibly can. I'm not, my power isn't going against his, it's going sideways. Strong. Okay. So, as the attack comes slowly, oh, step it out, that's gone out sideways. Creating this space. Simply bringing this leg up and in. 
and this hand at the same time remember using the palm of the hand that we discussed earlier into the chin and turning the hips and it works out This is the same technique from the same attack but done a slightly different way. Before this arm went under the attacker's arm, the attacker may be a lot shorter than you. If he's taller, your arm goes underneath. If he's shorter, it can go over the top in this, this style. Again, we move to the side. centre palm and at some speed now we move on to knife attack people are scared of knives and justly so but at the end of the day a knife is the extension of your hand 9 inches, 7 inches, 6 inches, it's just an extension of your hand. If you can handle a fist, you can handle a knife. The important things to remember about a knife attack is you must first and foremost get out of the way, then control the knife. It's no good attempting to control the knife from here when he can still bend his elbow and move the knife around. If you come below the elbow, that's the very least you want to be down the arm. Okay, the closer to the, the knife, the better. Wrapped around the fingers, perfect control. Release the knife. Of course he can't, because I've got the knife. It's in his hand, but I've got control of it. So remember, always controlling the knife. Then, of course, taking the knife away. There's some beautiful techniques, some wonderful techniques where they come up with a beautiful kick into the back of the hand and the knife shoots out of the hand and the knife drops on the floor. Your attacker or your opponent can pick the knife back up and stick it in you. Or a friend of his. You've lost control of the knife because you haven't got it in your hand. Or you're not controlling it in his hand. So the last thing you want is the knife flying around all over the place. <coughs> this is a straight stab at the stomach. And we're going to dis describe it as we go through it. Your attacker's here. He's not going to attack until he thinks he can stab you. So all this waving about and jumping around, wait for the attack to happen. If he doesn't attack you, what's the point in moving? Remember, first thing, out of the way of the knife. If it all goes wrong from here, I'm not stuck on the end of that blade, am I? So first thing, posture, submissive, whoa, don't want any trouble. Don't stab me as it comes, drop in the hand. As he comes, drop the hand, turn the leg. Bring this around, take control of the knife, loose the knife. Can't loose the knife, I've got control. Moving the second hand, cross the thumbs on the fingers, lifting the hand, dropping the elbow to the knee. Turning around, forcing this wrist lock over this way. Push it forward, slide the knife out. If you need to do some more, what you cannot do is give your opponent his knife back that way. Using the hilt of the knife, stepping forward, strike the back of the head. The worst he's going to get is a bad headache. Now we come to another roundhouse attack. It's a bit like the fist coming in round at you. This is when the knife is travelling in a circular direction. So coming round towards your neck. 
This is easier handled again by getting close into your opponent, not stepping away from him. If you step away from him, you're in no better situation. So, as it comes in, we have to move again with two hands. So we are here in our normal fighting posture. So from here, as we move, one hand to the, to the arm, one hand to the face. I'll demonstrate that from the other way around so that you can see. So we've gone into our posture. The knife comes, we move forward. One hand to the wrist, one hand to the jaw. This a striking hand, this a grabbing hand. Again. To here. From here. Taking the knife. Now we come to knife attack that's wild, slashing in at you. Again, safest place to be, closer to your opponent. What we're going to do this time, because it slashes forward, we're going to step back. As soon as we step back and the knife has missed us, we step forward to getting close to our opponent, bringing two axes close together. As the knife comes forward from our posture, stepping back and stepping forward. So, stepping back, straight forward. His power is coming this way. By moving our leg around, we bring him up. He's going to try and stand up from this position. As he does, pulling him back. We drop the knee into the ribs, push the elbow back against the knee, take the knife, and we're in control. Yeah.